I took a cruise with a cruise line that has been on my bucket list for years. I boarded Cunard's Queen Elizabeth out in Long Beach, California for a 14 night cruise that first of all took me to here, Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, and then here, Punta Arenas in Costa Rica, which is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. Yes, I did make it out into the jungle and I saw lots of wildlife, including this crocodile infested river, which I will tell you more about in another video. Anyway, back onto the ship, it was time to experience the incredible Panama Canal. This is a day that I will never ever forget and this ship completed a full transit out to the Caribbean. Absolutely remarkable transiting through the old lock system of the canal. The absolute finale of this cruise was going from the Pacific side of the canal out to here, the crystal clear waters of the Caribbean. Now before we get started, it would be amazing if you would subscribe to the channel and join me on not only this adventure, but so many more as I show you what it's like to transit the Panama Canal, visit some incredible ports, and also cruise with Cunard. How do you feel about joining me on a cruise today that is going to tick a huge box on my bucket list? If that sounds good, then you're watching the right video. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more in a little second, but first, let me show you where I've spent last night. Last night, I chose to stay in a hotel that was pretty different to anything else on offer in Long Beach, and that was the Queen Mary. This retired ocean liner was initially built in my home city of Glasgow for Cunard White Star Line, so it felt really quite fitting and very much appropriate to be staying here the night before boarding a Cunard ship namely Queen Elizabeth just up the road. I stayed in a standard king room overlooking the Long Beach skyline and it was really quite remarkable to see the current status of this restoration project. If you'd like to see more from my time on board the Queen Mary, head over to my channel and check out my videos. So yeah, that's right, last night I spent the night here in the floating hotel that is the Queen Mary, which has been it's been amazing to start this part of the trip with an overnight here. I've absolutely loved it. Now, anyway, where am I going today? Now, I can't wait for today, in case you can't tell already, because I'm ticking off a new cruise ship for me and also a brand new cruise line and also ticking off a cruise itinerary oh, that I never thought I'd get to do. So I am so grateful already for what the next couple of weeks has got in store. Now, I'm about to leave my cabin here on the Queen Mary and head about 10 minutes north, I believe, to get to the World Cruise Terminal, which is where Cunard's Queen Elizabeth will be waiting for me. Hopefully, all going well. Now, my cruise over the next two weeks is going to be out of Long Beach, down through the Panama Canal, around the Caribbean, and then up into Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is where I'll get off to get ready to get on my next ship. So, Oh, there, there are so many things that I just can't wait for over the next few weeks. And I'm going to wait and talk to you about them when we get into the cabin this afternoon. So yeah, let's get ready to leave the Queen Mary and head up to get on the Queen Elizabeth. Okay, here we go. It's time to leave the Queen Mary behind, jump in my Uber and head up to board Queen Elizabeth. Now, if you watched my last vlog series on board Carnival Panorama, then you'll remember that I cruised from a different terminal. That's because when you cruise from Long Beach in California, there are two different ports that you could leave from. The first one you can see there behind the Queen Mary, which is the Long Beach Cruise Terminal. That's the Carnival owned terminal. The second is the World Cruise Terminal, which is about a 15 minute Uber ride out of the city. And the first thing you will see when you board a Cunard ship here is that iconic red funnel. I had such a chill when I saw that for the first time. I just could not believe that this is what I was doing today. Unfortunately, it was at this point that I had my first hiccup of the day when my taxi driver dropped me off at the wrong terminal. Whilst not the end of the world, I then had about a 10 minute walk in the blistering sunshine, dragging all my luggage, which yeah, I would definitely rather do that journey in the comfort of an air conditioned taxi. Anyway, we are now here all that's left to now do is head inside. The boarding process here at the World Cruise Terminal was one of the smoothest I have ever seen. From the point of me arriving to the point of getting on the ship, 
took me all of about 10 minutes. You can see here, there was almost nobody waiting. It was so surreal. The reason I was given for that is that there were quite a lot of passengers who boarded a few days before in San Francisco or a few weeks before to also see Alaska on this cruise prior to doing the canal. So it wasn't actually a huge embarkation day today. Anyway, it's time for me to leave you to let you see what it's like to board this beautiful ship. All I'll say for now is this felt like nothing I've ever experienced before. It feels really weird to be saying it, but welcome to my cabin on board the Queen Elizabeth. Now, yeah, this is my first experience of a Cunard cabin. I looked at a couple of room tours on YouTube before coming on, but I didn't want to look at too many so that I could still have a little bit of like surprise and intrigue myself coming on to the ship. Now, what I would say, first impressions actually pretty strong or very strong for an inside cabin. My only bugbear, I have this thing where I hate staying in a hotel room or a cruise ship cabin where some of the lights don't work. And I'll show you around this cabin in a second after I've spoken, but this cabin has got this really nice feature behind the TV, which is like two big lights that are stuck onto the wall, like lamps. One of them works, one of them doesn't. So annoyingly, I'm gonna have to ask them to change that light bulb because looking at that, <laughs> <laughs> every morning for the next two weeks will drive me mad. But yeah, first impression is really good actually. I'm delighted that we've got a kettle in here so we can make coffee in the morning. But yeah, I am in an inside cabin up on deck six of the ship. Now for anyone that hasn't cruised before, that essentially just means that I don't have a window. So yeah, I will actually go down to guest services and see if they have other cabins that I could maybe upgrade to. At the point of booking, it was super expensive to even get a window. But now that you're on the ship, you can sometimes get decent deals to upgrade. But hey, with this being the one and only Panama Canal cruise that this ship will be doing this year, I'm not holding out. I'm not holding out for a good deal, but who knows? Let's wait and see. Anyway, look, a couple of things to walk you through or to mention just before I think about food, because I am now getting pretty hungry. I wanted just to show you some of the paperwork that I've received in the cabin. So quite often on a cruise, throughout the cruise, you get drip fed loads and loads of paperwork. And what they've done on here, it's almost done as like a welcome pack wrapped up in today's daily program. So I actually didn't know what time we sail out tonight, but all aboard is actually at 6.30 p.m. So I guess because you're in a city like Los Angeles, people that were on the ship before will want to go and see like the Griffith Observatory, they might want to go to the Walk of Fame and things, so you must get quite a long port day here on these kind of trips. But you've got the daily schedule, which, to be honest, looks pretty similar. Oh, I like the colour coding, actually. But it looks pretty similar to what I would expect to see on any of my other ships this year. Really lovely touch, actually, is there's a picture of... If this is the captain, then that's a really nice touch that you've been introduce to him as soon as you get into your cabin. Now, other bits of paper that are in here, we've got a price list and a bit of an overview about all of the excursions. Ah, there's also a page about the Panama Canal eastbound crossing. 
Okay, that could be an interesting read. There's then information about what a tender bow is, which I'll be showing you in Cabo San Lucas. So you've got an overview in the front and then more detail in the back. I'm intrigued to see if we still dock in Cabo because it was hit by Hurricane slash Tropical Storm Hillary. So I'm hoping that we do because I really liked it last week on Carnival Panorama. And then finally, we've got yeah a couple of promotions and things that are on this cruise. Now, two other things that are so nice. Number one is the daily puzzles that are included. So uh, this is lovely, actually. I know some cruise lines do it, but it's never normally in your cabin waiting for you when you come in. I hope this gets delivered every day. So you've got, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you've got a crossword on one side and then a Sudoku on the other. So I actually think that's such a nice idea. And yeah, it definitely gives you something to occupy all the sea days that we're gonna have on this route. Now, the other thing is a voyage guide. Now, I've never seen this before, but the thing that I'm really, really impressed with is just how premium this feels. I haven't had a proper look through yet, but I'm definitely going to sit and read some of this probably when I go to bed tonight. I think it's just like, you know, if you check into a hotel and you get like the guidebook and it's got on it where the shops are, what they recommend doing, some menus and things. I think it's just got that, but it's such a lovely, lovely way and it's all branded really nice. It's such a lovely way to welcome you on board a cruise ship. Now, the last thing actually, there's also this really nice Cunard branded pencil. We'll not talk about the fact that someone snapped all the lead out of it, so <laughs> I can't use it, but the sentiment of that is <laughs> it's just so nice with a little red bit representing the funnel. But yeah, look, I'm gonna think about heading up for lunch, but from what I can see at the moment, my first taste to luxury cruising, I'm actually really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. So look, let's head up to what I'm hoping will be the buffet, explore what's on offer up there, grab a bite to eat, and then I'll come back and talk to you about the plan for the afternoon. Okay guys, just before we head up for lunch, let me take you in and show you my cabin for the next two weeks. Now, this is room 6194, which is an inside cabin up on deck six. Now, I will give you a full room tour of this cabin, but I won't do it in this video. So yeah, head over to my channel and hopefully you'll find on there the full cabin tour if you're interested. I do think this is, there's the light I was telling you about, but I do think this is a really, really nice size of inside cabin. Sometimes you go on the maybe the newer ships and it feels really, really cramped. So yeah, this is good. This is just such a nice addition for our British cruise line. Now we've got a kettle and then in here we have got, what do we have here? Traditional butter cookies. So they will definitely be welcome at any time of day. Obviously the benefit to cruising solo is you've got double everything. So yeah, long may that continue. Now anyway, storage looks pretty good as well. Air conditioning, thank goodness. And yeah, the bathroom, bathroom feels, actually bathroom feels quite nice. I like the fact that you've got the individual um, hand soap and things here. So rather than it being stuck on the wall, you've got quite nice branded actually, uh, hand wash and then in here, you've got the same brand bath and shower gel and also a shampoo. So yeah, bathroom, to be honest, it's nice. It's not as premium as I expected it to be. Like that's basically what I would see on most other cruise ships really. But that said, still really, really happy. But look, let's head out the room now, head up for lunch because I am beginning to get starving and I'll see all of you in a little bit. One thing that I really liked about lunch on board Queen Elizabeth was that they printed the buffet menu every day by the door so that you could plan what to have before you went in. I decided that for lunch today, I wasn't ready for a fancy buffet. I was ready for a burger and chips and luckily for me I found the Lido pool grill at the top of the ship at the back pool and let me tell you the menu here was actually pretty good. You'll see throughout my videos that we do sample this dining option quite a few times but I was really really happy with what I got in here. I just opted for a burger, chips and obviously a massive healthy dollop of mayonnaise on the plate. And after that, I headed inside to get a free ice cream. That's a top tip from me. The ice cream from the soft serve machine on Cunard is free all day. Now I enjoyed those snacks while watching the scenery outside, which honestly the heat today was 
so beautiful it was so nice to just sit on that deck and just look at everything that was going on it's worth mentioning you're not in as picturesque a port area when you leave from the world cruise terminal it's much more industrial than what it was if you watched my video from carnival panorama but there's no doubt about it when you look at this scenery you're in california all the palm trees and the houses on the hill just say to me we're in los angeles anyway i'll see you down in the cabin before we think about sailing out of port guys we need to talk about first impressions because i don't think i've ever felt as positive about a ship within the first what two hours of getting on board is what i do with this this is absolutely beautiful and i am so excited to explore more of the ship tonight now i'm just getting ready for sail away and i think i might have found the perfect spot now I think I'm going to do Sail Away down on the promenade deck. So this ship has a really nice looking wraparound promenade deck. And then I'll also head up to the back pool because I think they've got a bit of entertainment happening in there tonight as we leave. The port tonight, I mean, it looks as though we're going to get a sunset Sail Away, which should be beautiful. So look, let's head out, watch the ship leaving the port of Los Angeles. And I'll come back to the room after and talk to you about the plan for tonight and also just what I'm most excited about with this cruise in general. So yeah, I'll see you down on the promenade deck. At 29 and I find myself wondering What did happen to the last 10? I ran away with my life fast forward Never turn back again it's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. And just like that, we have left Los Angeles and we are now heading out into the open ocean towards Cabo San Lucas, which is our next port. So the itinerary that I'm on here has got two sea days now before we hit Mexico, which, yeah, if you followed along in my last series on board Carnival Panorama, I'm a little bit nervous about Mexico <laughs> because it was so hot last week. So yeah, hopefully it's cooled down slightly down there, which means I can actually function normally. But yeah, look, plan for tonight, because you can probably tell that I'm now back in the cabin, changed and ready to head back out. Now, on the daily programme that I was going to say Carnival, that Cunard give you, I'm forgetting what cruise line I'm with at the moment. So on the daily programme that Cunard give you, they list it out really nicely actually so you can see here 
they've got on one page the afternoon, early evening on this page here. And on this page over here, they've got going into the night. Now they actually color code all of their events. So I'll need to turn it back around so that I can talk you through it. But you've got, if it's in purple, for example, it's live music. If it's in light purple, it's some, something special. If it's pink, it's learn something new. So it's actually going to be so interesting over the next couple of days to see what's on because I've heard that the entertainment and the daily schedule on Cunard is very, very different to a lot of other cruise lines. So I'm going to be fascinated to see what happens over the next couple of days. Now, my plan for tonight, it's already 8pm and I'm on flexible dining. So when I boarded the ship, I got given this little bit of paper that just said Cunard, your dining reservation. And basically it just says the Britannia restaurant, deck two, any time between 5.30pm and 8.30pm. So I've got 20 minutes before my dinner time closes essentially. So I'll head down and get dinner in the main dining room. And then after that, I am going to head to the show. Now the show tonight is what looks like a kind of electric cello type performance. I am looking forward to that because on Carnival last week they had a really, really good string band on there. So I'm intrigued to see, I haven't seen the theatre on here yet, and I also think entertainment like that on here will be very good because I think that probably that probably hits their target audience pretty well, I would imagine. Now, other things that you could get up to tonight so that I can, I guess, let you know the things that you won't necessarily see in this video, but quite a lot of people always ask, well, if you don't just go to the show, what else could I do? So you've got loads of live music around here. The majority of it is live music. So you've got a solo musician up in the garden lounge, which is like an open deck area, kind of, up on deck nine. You've got around the world with Queen's Room musicians. So in the Queen's Room, they've got a live band playing in there. We probably will pop by there, actually, because I walked through there and it looks stunning earlier. You've then got pianists. You've got a string trio who are playing in the lobby. You've got late night dancing in the yacht club. So yeah, there's actually quite a lot going on. What I would say is that it definitely feels more subdued on here than almost every other cruise line that I've sailed with, which I think will be very refreshing tonight because I've just got off a carnival cruise. But what I'm really excited to see, excited would be the wrong word, what I'm really looking forward to seeing is how I feel on here after the number of sea days that we've got on this cruise. So on this 14 night cruise, I think we've got like eight or nine sea days because we're repositioning over to Florida. So yeah, I'm very intrigued to see if the daily schedule on here keeps me busy enough or if I start to pull my hair out by the end, which yes, I got a haircut in LA, so I don't have a huge amount left to pull out, but let's wait and see. Now, anyway, let's go for dinner. I probably won't show you walking into the dining room because I'm still trying to suss out the ship at the moment but I will show you what I eat for dinner and I'll come back at the end of the night and close off and I guess tell you how it's been. So let's head down and check out the dinner situation. Now that we're in the dining room, let's talk about the menu. I found the menu in here to be refreshingly not British. I'm not sure why, but I had this preconceived image in my mind that on a Cunard, very British cruise ship, every night we'd be eating very stereotypically British food, but that wasn't the case at all. For my starter tonight, I had chicken satay before moving on to my second starter, which was Alaskan salmon. I then moved on to Malaysian chicken, which was one of the tastiest things I've ever eaten on a cruise ship. I could have eaten 10 of them, but luckily I restrained myself to one before moving on to dark chocolate fondant for dessert, which I had with vanilla ice cream instead of the chocolate that was on the menu. I then finished off with a decaf coffee, a couple of chocolates, and then I was ready for the night. After dinner, I headed along to this space here, which is the Queen's Room, and it's one of the most popular and famous venues on board Cunard cruise ships. This is, as you can see, the main ballroom and dancing space on board, and you'll find this busy pretty much all the time on your cruise. It's such an absolutely gorgeous space. 
Now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm not a dancer. I am, however, a fan of a glass of red wine watching people dance. So that's exactly what I did from the upper floor. And after spending about half an hour in the Queen's Room, I then moved through to the Royal Court Theatre. Look at this venue. This is one of the most stunning theatre venues that I have seen on a ship in a long time. Absolutely beautiful. And to be perfectly honest, this is worthy of a spot in the West End. I was so impressed. I wasn't allowed to film in here, so I'll catch up with you after the show, back up in the cabin. You know guys, I can hardly believe I'm saying it, but that's the night over and I'm now safely back in my inside cabin. Now, yeah, that was a very, very, very quick night. Granted, I only left here at like 20 past eight or something, but it's now half past 11 and it's just gone like that. I have no idea where that time's gone. But look, quick summary on tonight. Now, dining room, as you've seen, dining room was absolutely fabulous tonight. If it continues like that every single night of this cruise, I will be delighted. If it continues like that, I also don't think I'll have a single no dessert night. So, yeah, I might need to go and buy seven more packets of Rennies by the time by the time we get to Mexico in two days' time. But yeah, the food tonight very very good. I should say that my fare, obviously being on the inside of the ship, I am in one of the cheaper accommodation options on here, and for that reason, I'm eating or tonight anyway, I have eaten in what is the main dining room, so the included complimentary dining option. So the food I showed you wasn't part of any kind of fancy restaurant, it was just the main one that was included for everyone, so really, really impressed. Now, after that, I went along to the show, which I wasn't allowed to take any photos, wasn't allowed to take any videos, which is... Yeah, I get why, but it's yeah a little bit annoying when I'm trying to then show you guys what it looks like. But I guess in short, right, the show tonight was a bit naff is probably the word that I would use to describe it. Where it wasn't at all what I was expecting. Reflecting back on what Carnival did with their string show, there was loads of dancing, it was really immersive, the strings were kinda out in the audience and yeah, it was it was a really innovative design of a show I guess but tonight we had one person with an electric cello there was then a full orchestra on the stage so they've got an eight piece orchestra on this ship which I think that's the first time I've ever seen an eight piece on a cruise ship now that's amazing but what I tended to find tonight is that they did at times drown out what was meant to be the main event so it was quite difficult sitting there to understand okay are we listening to the orchestra are we listening to you what like what is the show because it was just song after song but hey look it's maybe just not my taste to be honest I'm hoping that the entertainment tomorrow and going forward when we hit the production shows that's when it's going to get a lot better because paying a lot more for a Cunard fare than what I would expect to pay on a normal a, a normal mainstream cruise line if that's the word to use I would expect the entertainment to be head and shoulders above the rest of them now yeah, end of night one. Before I cover a few things to do with day two, I just wanted to, I guess, touch on what I'm most excited about with this cruise. And our ports, this cruise, are, to be honest, our ports are going to be good, but they're certainly not going to be the highlight. So our ports here are Cabo San Lucas, which we've got after two days at sea. We then have a port in Costa Rica, followed by a transit of the Panama Canal, which will be the main event, which I'll come back to, and then Aruba before exiting up into Fort Lauderdale. So there's not a huge amount of ports for a 14-night cruise, but the main deal with this cruise is the Panama Canal. I can't wait to see it, especially having witnessed the Suez Canal back in April. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this versus that, how they both compare, what the technology is like because I've heard a lot of things about the Panama Canal and if what I've heard is right, at the moment my brain can't compute it. So yeah, really, really looking forward to a couple of days time when we get to the canal. Now, the other thing that I'm really, really excited about with this cruise is, and it maybe sounds a bit daft, but just experience in Cunard. So 
for years. So I took my first cruise just shortly before the pandemic. And ever since, Cunard's been a company that I've really, really, really wanted to cruise with. Cunard and Viking are probably the two companies that I've been dying to try, but to be honest, they've been out of my price range, especially with Cunard usually charging for the full double fare. Now, this cruise, I am just so thankful and so grateful to actually have the opportunity to get onto this ship because it's a ship, not as much a ship, but it's a line that I've been just so eager to try, but they haven't necessarily been within easy reach is probably the best way of putting it. So yeah, nothing I will be seeing over the next few weeks will be taken for granted. And I am going to, to be honest, love every single minute of being on this ship. So I'm really looking forward to showing you guys what Cunard is like, because you may be in a position where you've done loads of luxury cruises before, or you might be in a position like me where most of your cruises are on mega ships and maybe you haven't actually dipped your toes in this side of the market or this side of the um, industry. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what this is like and also bringing you guys with me. But yeah, look, plan for now. I'm going to bed, but one thing that I am going to do in bed, which I need to talk to you about, is my daily schedule for tomorrow because there's a lot on and I just want to mention the solo traveller situation for tomorrow because it is, it's blown me away just coming back to the cabin. So, right, there is so much on tomorrow. It fills the entire triple page of the daily schedule. So I've got a lot of reading to do. Now, basically what I do before I go to bed on, the fir on every single night of my cruise, I will sit and make a little mark against everything that I want to go to. I would usually have my highlighter, but I've just realised I've left my highlighter in my Long Beach hotel, which is very annoying. So I'm going to have to try and find a new highlighter tomorrow on the ship somewhere. But yeah, what I did want to show you is we'll come back and we'll talk about the schedule in more detail tomorrow because we'll actually be at sea all day. But I wanted to just talk about the solo stuff because a lot of the ships I've been on, they do like a solo traveller catch up on day one. And then that's it. And you're kind of left thinking, well, I missed it on day one, so on my own now sort of thing. On here, they have got tomorrow as an example. Tomorrow morning, they have got, where is it? They've got a solo traveller, 10 a.m. Oh my goodness, 10, 15 a.m., there it is. Solo traveller's coffee morning at the midship's bar. Now, I imagine that being a coffee morning, they're going to put on coffee, which will be great. So that's 10.15. You've then, at midday, got the Solo Traveller's Luncheon in the Britannia Restaurant Deck 2, which there's a phone number here that you can phone them to make a reservation. You've then got, at 5.30, the Solo Traveller's Evening Meeting Point, Midships Bar. And then I think that's it for tomorrow. Yes, it is. But I am honestly so impressed. And Cunard... Honestly, if anyone from Cunard stumbles upon this video, I take my hat off to you for what you're doing tomorrow because if that is going to continue every day of the cruise, there'll be no solo travellers on here who will be lonely, which is excellent news. So, yeah, that is going to be read before I go to sleep and I'll talk you through the plan for tomorrow in my next video. The other thing I'll be reading before I go into bed is this, which is my breakfast in bed room service menu. Now, if I flick this over, look at the size of that menu. There's a lot on offer here. And yeah, tomorrow morning, because we're at sea and it's our first day at sea and I just want to chill a bit before I go to the solo traveller stuff, I'm going to have breakfast in bed because it's just such a luxury having your breakfast brought to you on a sea day. Especially when you're in this little like haven of an inside cabin. I just love them because you're totally on your own shut off from the world. So, I mean, you can order on here. I've, I've, honestly, I've seen room service. I've never seen <laughs> this before. So you can order Bloody Marys. You can order champagne. You can order caviar. Granted, they all come with an additional cost. But you've then, I mean, even like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven different types of fruit juice on here. I don't even know what prune juice is. 
but I might order it tomorrow just be <laughs> just because I can. But yeah, tune into my next video and I'll show you room service breakfast because I think this might be a treat. The only thing I'm not sure what a poached egg is because I would love eggs Benedict. My only options for eggs though are scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs with salmon and chives, which I know is not either of them. Eggs sunny side up, eggs over easy, or a boiled egg. I'll maybe order eggs sunny side up and see if that comes. I don't know, we'll be brave. Let's see what that comes like. But hey look, anyway, breakfast in bed. We'll be beginning tomorrow's video with that. But look, for now, I'm gonna turn in. So I just need to say a massive thank you to you guys for watching and I really hope that you've enjoyed a first taste of Cunard today because I honestly have had an absolute ball today. I can't believe this morning I was on the Queen Mary and I'm now on the Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> it's been a day that, oh, to be honest, yeah. It's been a day that, oh, I'm going to remember today for a long time. Yeah, it's been really good. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, it would be great if you could jump down below and chuck it a thumbs up. And also, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that down there as well. But for now, thank you so much, guys. And I will see all of you bright and early tomorrow morning for breakfast. So yeah, good night. Bye.